literally, mind the pun, air sections are out there, Mitch. We know everybody left in the draw has the capability to go big. Heat we have in the lineup is another fun one. We got Alistair Reginato way down in number 67 on the Challenger Series. Jake Marshall at number 23, but has had a lot of success here in Huntington Beach. Um, it looks like Alistair right now does have first priority. Jake's first wave was a 3-1-7, so not a crazy score. Looks like Alistair right here. Going to go left, and, a, you know, nice snap right there. And then comes off the bottom. Another jam, so two good turns i mean that for out there right now that's quality you know two two bigger moments be interesting to see the wave did have a lot of bump on it but to me timing placement and precision going to come into a critical role here just like that not an easy section to attack and the quality over the quantity phrase today is going to be essential to a lot of these score lines gets a little hung up after the first one but the timing on the second one just beautiful and in, in the pocket the whole time Great use of positioning right there for... Because <laughs> he said the 2% crew's kind of had his numbers, so he knows. Here's Jake, little speed float right there. Then fin drifts. Yes. Spinner. There's a five in it, and if you can add something before or after, that's how you get up into the seven and eight range. And here we go again. Jake wasting no time on his backhand. That right there is uh, the type of wave that when he's home, he's surfing a lot down at Seaside Reef. That is a, a, pal, a little mini pally bowl all day long. <laughs> yeah, on the inside. And, you know, I like the strategy right here. I think activity, especially knowing that you're only going to surf once today, is at least from my perspective, his best wave so far. Great combination on the outside. But really like the slide of the fins at the end, too. Brought out the variation and some creativity for a section that really wouldn't be consequential for most scores. Yeah, the judges love when you when you get a finish off a maneuver. Those first two were solid, too. A bit more vertical. This one, he kind of wraps it back into the pocket, let it build up, and then drifts the fins on the little, you know, flatter section. Telling him to do this. Go vertical. Just go vert and rip. <laughs> wait. Hammer it again. Wait. Hammer it again. <laughs> oh, you just say all get of yourself, that from the sand. <laughs> get yourself the best score of the heat. Now, uh, yeah, it's weird. I find myself as a coach, I get super engaged, and I, I start like I feel like you can guide someone to the right spot if there's more waves. But there, there's guys like Jake who who have a really good uh, feel of the ocean more so, and he's just got this kind of guru feel. So, but at a point break or a difficult wave like Sunset Beach, you definitely can't do that, Chris. It's a lot more difficult to get the message across to the surfer. Yeah, and I guess the biggest difference would be if you're looking at the beach towards your coach. Let's jump right back into round of 16, heat five. This is Alistair Reginato, Australian, Italian ripper, currently in the depths of the Challenger Series, but already making improvements on his previous results. He finds himself here in round of 16, going up against Jake Marshall. He does need a 6-4-8. If he wants to get into that top spot, first place surfer advances through. Um, and I think Reginato recognized that he was around the 10-minute mark. He probably wanted to get the score right there and then just manage time and priority afterwards. Up and riding again, though, still needing the same score, Chris. Kind of went over that lump, up and into the lip. Tough wave to surf. You know, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these waves that look like they're going to be a nice peaky wedge just turn all shoulder and then die completely. Well, what's that tactile element that these surfers are dealing with that we might not see from the beach? Well, I will say Jake's utilizing his priority right here. Big hammer. Ooh, pokes the nose. So this is Alistair's chance with, you know, 310 to go. He will have priority. A couple little bumps right here. Which way is he going to go? A little fade. So nice turn there, a little more vertical, but this thing looks like it goes flat. And that's what you do have, Chris. Like, they're over by the pier a little more. And uh, those waves end up, it's a little deeper over there. So you do get a little ribs and chops, and the water has to go somewhere. And when it goes out through the pier, you get all that reverberation. Yeah, he had to come around that big section. Nice effort on that opening snap, but you just saw that wave just lack to the power to really... Given the push down the line, he kept trying, which I do appreciate. And never give up. You know, anything is possible in these uh, last couple of minutes. You got to watch down to the wires. We see Alistair Reginato at it again. This one in second priority. Not a great wave, but I don't think it's going to really get him too far out of position or anything like that. You can just kind of tell with the body language that. So Jake's going to utilize 50 seconds to go. Usually mini, under mini defense right anything there. under a minute, you, you typically kind of have well. to do it. 
but Jeez. he's ripping the bag out of this thing. <laughs> Bonus. Wow, go through that T. <laughs> Holy mackerel. It was a nice wave. It was actually a flatter, soft wave, but he was zipping around. That board looks nice. That awesome. epoxy. For this young Australian, but congratulations. Jake Marshall moves on. We're starting to stack our quarterfinals. Things are getting exciting.